There's a reason why Vanguard is one of the most popular investment firms out there. And it's not because it's the sexiest. Hey girl, guess what's coming up? It's Valentine's and I got a special one planned for just the two of us. Or the coolest. People come up to me all the time and say, you should be a model or you look just like a model. Of all the investment management groups out there, it's probably the boringest one of all. So what is it about Vanguard that so many smart investors are recommending it and have become the largest provider of mutual funds in the world with seven trillion in global assets under management? Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, a channel dedicated to helping the Sandy generation master money and achieve financial security. One of the most common investing questions I get is, what do I prefer Vanguard over other investment firms? Don't you see how better other investment firms are? Don't you see Fidelity's 0% expense ratio index fund? Or have you seen Charles Schwab's ETF trading platform? It's completely customized it's easy to get swayed by the new and sexy products out there. But once you understand a few things about Vanguard that not many people are aware of, I guarantee it will change how you view the company and its products. In order to understand Vanguard, we need to start with its founder, Mr. Jack Bogle. Mr. Bogle founded Vanguard in 1975 when the financial industry was set up exclusively to enrich those selling financial products at the expense of their customers. Now that I think of it, in some way the industry hasn't changed that much since. With the start of Vanguard, he created the first S&P 500 index fund the Vanguard 500 Index Fund, a passively managed fund with low cost that would only track the market instead of trying to beat it. He gave the individual investors like you and I the ability to tap into the amazing growth of the stock market without needing to overpay fund managers who could hardly beat the market themselves. However, that isn't the primary reason why Vanguard is so special in comparison to other investment firms out there. It has to do with the company structure that Mr. Jack Bogle set up at his founding. It was so unique and revolutionary that it continues to remain unique in the investment world today. Vanguard is by design client-owned and it's operated at cost. So what does this mean? It means that when you choose to purchase a fund from Vanguard, you not only are its customer, you're also its owner. There ought to be a better way to run a fund business and persuaded the directors of the Wellington Fund and the Windsor Fund and the other funds to start a new structure in which the funds were in the driver's seat and not the management company. Most other investment companies are set up differently. They're structured to serve two separate masters the company owners, and the investors in their funds, their customers. Fidelity, for example, is a private company owned by the founding Johnson family, employees, and ex-employees. Fidelity exists to provide quality service to its investors. However, it must also provide healthy profits for its owners, the Johnson family, Fidelity employees, and its ex-employees. If there's a tension between the two groups because the market isn't doing well and the profits are low, who do you think will pay the cost to raise profits? Charles Schwab is a publicly traded company, so it's owned by individuals who own its stocks. Similarly, individuals who own the stock expect good returns in their investments. Charles Schwab needs to provide quality service to its customers slash investors to keep them happy, but at the end of the day, if pressure is on to raise profits, who do you think will pay the cost? A publicly traded company is pressured to generate profit, and it most often will do that at the expense of its customers slash investors. It's the same story with BlackRock, the world's largest asset managers with $10 trillion in asset under management, a major public company with shareholders as its owners. And the same with State Street, the world's fourth largest asset manager with nearly $3.59 trillion in assets under management. These companies may not be looking out for your best financial interests, but you can by downloading my free PDF personal finance guide. Go to my website at financialtortoise.com and download your free copy of Sandy Generation's Guide to Financial Security, 10 Steps to Securing Your Family's Financial Future. I also have a link in the description below. When times are going well and the company is churning out good profit while still serving its investors well, these private company and public company model are not a problem. And there is nothing inherently wrong with this model. Most companies operate this way and it works great a lot of times. Think about Apple. They make fantastic and reliable devices and they charge as much as possible to generate as much profit for shareholders. Who would have thought smartphones would be sold for $1,000 each? However, because of the value it provides, customers still buy them. In Apple's case, a lot of them. Customers get a high quality phone that they want and investors of Apple get high returns for their investments. Customers are excited because they have the latest Apple device in their hand, but the real winners are the shareholders. Apple is generating ridiculous profits by charging its customers $1,000 per phone. It's estimated that it costs the company around $500 to make an iPhone. This means Apple is making approximately 50% net profit from each of its iPhones. And to be honest, if you're a shareholder of Apple, you would want them to charge more and make Make more money for you, right? It's the same story with investment firms. Owners of Fidelity, Charles Schwab, or BlackRock 
both private and public owners want profits to be high as possible. Profits are what's left over after the cost of operating the funds are accounted for. Staff salaries, product development, system maintenance, etc. You can increase profits by cutting costs, but if there's a limit to how much operating costs you can cut back, where do you think they'll find room to increase profit? In the case of investment firms, because the products they're selling are investment products and the money is made on fees charged to customers and investors, this comes out to higher fees to its customers. This is where Vanguard is very unique in the investment world. Mr. Jack Bogle shifted the ownership of Vanguard to the mutual fund it operates. And since the investors own those funds through the ownership of shares within them, the investors, you and I in effect, own Vanguard when we invest with them. And because a company is client-owned, it would only make sense that Vanguard operates operates this fund at cost, the minimum fees needed to cover the cost of operations of the funds, nothing more. Vanguard is inherently structured to provide the lowest possible fee to its customers as possible because they're also its owners. Your interest as an investor and the interest of Vanguard are exactly the same. If you can't take my word for it, let's hear it directly from the founder himself. Uh, here's your fund. It's run by Vanguard and you own Vanguard. And Vanguard also runs a whole bunch of other funds and we allocate the cost among those funds, there are now probably 165 of them. So the costs are allocated depending on the fund's own cost, depending on competition, depending on fairness, things like that. The bottom line is this. Since Vanguard investors are also the owners of the company itself, it is to everyone's aligned interest to keep the fees low as possible. Today, and for the foreseeable future. Other investment firms do not have this structure. Private and public companies alike need to serve two different masters, its owners and its customers. There are a lot of hype about the index fund from other companies like Fidelity that have lower expense ratio than Vanguard, but it's a guess to see if this will hold up in the long run. I really do hope so, but it feels like a short-term marketing ploy for customer acquisition. There's actually a business term for this. They call them lost leaders, and you see them often in retail. Printers and Printer Inc. are a good example. While printers are often sold at or below cost, the price of ink is set extremely high. Loss leader pricing is used to get customers to purchase the printer at a loss, but make money from selling them printer ink, which is more expensive. Who knows if this is a direction Fidelity will go in the future, but I'm sure they'll eventually figure out a way to make more money from these funds. And the concern is how they will do this, at the expense of their operational costs or at the cost to the investors. I know I'm picking on Fidelity here, but I do want to say Fidelity is still a great company with some fine funds in their offering. I just want to highlight that because they need to generate generate profits for its owners, they're at a structural disadvantage compared to Vanguard. Of course, this goes with all other firms as well. Today, Vanguard operates approximately 200 funds with an average expense ratio of 0.09%. The industry average ranges between 0.5 to 1%. If choosing the right investment firm has kept you from investing your money, don't wait. Go with Vanguard. And if you want to learn more about the best funds to invest your money into, check out my video on 5 best Vanguard funds to buy and hold forever. Thank you again. I'll see you in my next video.